So what we're going to do now is add support for MySQL into our app. At the moment we're using SQLite for development purposes. But I mentioned quite early on in the course that it's super easy to swap databases or database servers when we're using Entity Framework because our actual database is abstracted away from us. And because we're using Entity Framework queries, these get translated into SQLite queries or MySQL queries or SQL Server queries. And what we're going to do now is simply swap our database for a MySQL database. Now, if you're a Windows user and you would prefer to use SQL Server, that's absolutely fine. But part of this is to publish our application onto a Linux server. So we are going to be making use of MySQL to do that for sure. But after that, then we're going to take a look at Azure. And Azure uses SQL Server. So we're going to look at both sides of this. But first of all, if you don't have MySQL installed on your computer, then you can get it from MySQL Downloads. And what we want is the MySQL Community Edition. So if you go to the download section inside here and go and grab MySQL Community Server. And we just want the generally available release. The current version is 8.0.16. And just go and get the version for your particular operating system. If you're on a Mac, this is the one you want to get. It will give you a DMG archive, which you can effectively double click and just install all of the defaults and give it a password so that you can access the MySQL instance. Obviously there's versions available for every single operating system and if you're on Windows then go ahead and grab the MySQL installer and install it with the default settings. And once you've gone ahead and installed this then you should have access to this via the command line. We're not going to install MySQL Workbench or anything like that. If you've got it, great, but it's not necessary for what we're doing. So we can manage everything that we need to via the command line. And once you've got it installed, what you should be able to do is log into MySQL via the command line and say dash u and root and dash p and then enter your password. And once you're in, you should see this particular screen. And if you look at show databases and semicolon, then this will give you a list of the database, the default databases that come with MySQL. Now, I'm not a MySQL expert. I can use it to get by. I don't know all of the intricacies about managing and using a MySQL server, but I know enough to get our application running on this particular platform. So what we also want to do is create a normal user that we can use to manage our databases and use as the authenticated user in our connection string as well. Now we're going to give this user significant permissions just to make it easy to do what we're doing here. And what we'll do is we'll use the create user command in MySQL and the username will be app user. And then we say at and local host and then we say identified with and what we want to do here is use the MySQL native password since MySQL version 8 it uses certificates for authentication but to keep things simple and so that we can connect via VS code we'll use a MySQL underscore native underscore password and then we say buy and then we give the password we want inside quotes and I'll say PA dollar dollar W zero RD and then we close the statement with a semicolon and press return and this creates the user for us. What we want to do next is grant all privileges on everything in this case like I say I'm keeping it simple to app user in quotes at localhost with grant option and again close the statement with a semicolon and I've got an error somewhere in my syntax and I've missed off the two so it should be grant all privileges on asterisk followed by a period two 
then the app user at localhost with grant option let's try this and that one worked and then we can just flush the privileges to ensure that the privileges are updated and with this in place what we can do next is we can go to VS Code and what we'll use there's a MySQL extension we can make use of in VS Code that's pretty good and it's a MySQL management tool and we'll pick the one that's got the most downloads which is this one 293,000 and we'll just go ahead and install this and once this is installed what we can do is we can go to our command shell and search for MySQL and let's click on the add connection and the host in this case is going to be local host the user will be the user we've just created so that's going to be app user and then we enter the password and press return and the, the standard port for MySQL is 3306 so we'll accept this one and we don't need to enter a certificate path so we'll just press return and then we should see inside our explorer window is a MySQL option and this gives us our local host with all of the default databases and this is going to make it easy to see and manage what we're doing with MySQL so now we've got this in place what we'll do next is take a look at adding some additional providers so that we can use MySQL with Entity Framework.